Welcome back. This is the Property Show, and today's show will be talking about serviced offices. These service providers offer space, facilities, and support to companies and individuals who do not care to set up an office and the necessary support staff. This morning, I'm talking to General Manager Southeast Asia of Surf Corp, Ms. Susie Martin. Why don't you describe the uh, service office industry, at least the terrain in Malaysia and maybe the region? Certainly. There's not a lot of information, interestingly, about the serviced office market. We don't have a, an industry organisation. From a worldwide perspective, there's probably over 10,000 business centres globally. Uh, and as an industry, we support every major industry, every major type of business, government, SMEs, SOHOs. In Malaysia, we have Probably 6% of the commercial office space here is taken up through our serviced office centres. How is the service industry kind of segmented? It's segmented probably in four main ways. First off, you have the major international companies, uh, of which we're one, who have over 100 plus locations worldwide, um, and we look after local companies within a country, major multinationals, uh, and provide a premium product, premium team, premium infrastructure. Then you have those regional players who really focus on a region. So they might focus on Southeast Asia, Europe. Then you have those operators who are very local operators. They might have a mum and dad sort of operation or just have one or two locations in a city uh, or in a country. And then the last one would be building owners themselves who have taken to building and managing their own serviced office within their buildings on their own or in conjunction with a serviced office provider. Those are the four main segments. What do you look for in a building before you get into it? Interestingly, I think our criteria was determined uh, in the way that we came into being. Over 30 years ago, our CEO was looking to set up his own business and he was looking for a, a good quality building with staff to support him. But he found there was no availability to do that in a building at his size of business. The only thing he could do was share small space, not particularly good buildings, not with a dedicated team. So it wasn't a very good image for his business. So he actually saw there was a niche in the market that people wanted to have premium building, good access to transport, and that they probably, as they were opening and expanding their businesses, that their main focus was going to be in those CBD locations. And so I guess that history of our company, we ourselves, starting as a small business mm -hmm. um, and expanding, we realised that what you need is good infrastructure, good quality building, premium locations, first spot being major cities. So that's how we then, we stick to that plan and that's how we decide where we're going to open. So the image itself is quite important. Correct. Beyond this kind of criteria, what do you look for in terms of size of the property? What kinds of facilities are available to that premises? Transportation is always important for clients and for their guests. So you are looking for something that is going to be good to whatever transport's available in that city, be that to airports, trains, buses, that's what you're after. Um, accessibility for people getting to and from their homes. Again, looking for good quality buildings that are going to have good infrastructure we then invest in that infrastructure and go that extra mile but obviously the building has to have certain level of facilities in it to, to attract tenants. What facilities do you offer to your clients? We can offer our clients, I guess what we're saying is, you know, the advantages, what is it that makes a serviced office advantageous or? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's actually quite a range. I guess that's why the business has been growing. We are offer quite a lot of things to our clients. We give them a corporate presence without them having to go through the capital outlay. To put that in perspective, we spend around one and a half to two million US dollars to fit out a location. For a company that's entering a market, that's quite a huge outlay if they don't know whether their business is going to be successful or not yet. In addition, our infrastructure. We really do invest in the best IT and communications um, support and obviously for any new company coming into a market they need that competitive advantage but when you're first starting out you want your cash flow to be really looking at your sales and driving your marketing not spending on IT infrastructure so we put all that IT infrastructure in. We've developed our own unique intellectual property um, that allows our clients to leverage off our locations worldwide. 
t- typically uh, who uses a service office? Are they mostly international companies who are trying to create presence here or local businesses? Both. The reason that's driving it, well, firstly, as I was saying, the actual outlay, whether you're a small company, local company starting up or you're a major multinational first coming into a market, if you're starting up in a city, you don't know what the success of your business is going to be, not unless you have a crystal ball, I guess. And you don't want to be committing to a long-term lease when in the business world, you know, one year is a long time in business. If you're committing to a three-year lease, you might find yourself with too much space or not enough space. But to lease from you, I mean, what's what, what's Minimum a one month. Oh. So it's very flexible. So it's that flexibility that is really going to help any business local or international when they're coming into a city. Secondly, it's the infrastructure, as I said. You don't want to be fitting out with all of the furniture and everything that you require and the IT and spending one and a half million dollars if you don't know what the success of your business is going to be. And thirdly, it's team. You're there to focus on your core business. So whether you're a lawyer or you're a software engineer, that's what you do. But you're going to need someone to answer your calls and support your business. You don't necessarily want them on your payroll, particularly if there's going to be downtime. On the average, how much does it cost per workstation? It's hard to, I can't really speak for other businesses, to be honest, but the client is looking at spending somewhere between, and we work on an office basis rather than a workstation basis, so the client can decide how many people are going to work in that office. That you're looking at somewhere, say, here in KL, between 700 to 1,000 US dollars per office, per and per that, office. Could, that could easily accommodate one to three people. At what juncture do you think this would make economical sense to stay in a service office? I can probably tell you juncture where you should look for your own space. (laughs) Once you get to, say, 10 people that are in your office full time, then it's probably more economical for you to look at your own space because it's worth taking that longer lease term commitment. It's worth fitting out that space and having those employees on your payroll. What are the common challenges of managing clients? In business, it used to be the the adage that you could have it cheap, you could have it fast, or you could have it good. Pick two. But I think in today's world, your clients don't want to settle for just two of those. They want all three. And the way we've managed those expectations is by getting ahead of them. So from a good or quality perspective, we've always had that premium fit-outs, premium locations, and well-trained team. From the low cost the cheaper option, we are actually reducing their costs to run and set up their office. But you do have to work point out sometimes that it's not actually what you spend but what you get for your money. For instance, because of the technology we're able to put in and they're able to access, we can reduce their core costs on an ongoing basis. Now that's something they couldn't afford to have had access to that. What are the takeaway points from understanding what this industry provides? That if you're looking to set up a business and you're under 10 people, the ongoing and set up costs will be better if you set up in a serviced or a virtual office than if you try and set up on your own and will give you better credibility than if you try and work from home and have meetings in your lounge room or in a Starbucks. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that was Ms. Susie Martin, ServCorp Southeast Asia General Manager.